When we think of humans, we often think of what is called the modern anatomical human, which is basically what you and I are. But prior to recorded history, there were other subspecies of humans. Chief among these were the so-called Neanderthals, scientifically called Homo neanderthalensis, originally named after a quote-unquote Tal, which means valley in German, after remains of what would later be known as Neanderthal were discovered in that region of Europe. Today, we are in the process of learning more and more about these extinct yet fascinating cousins of you and me, and most importantly, it seems almost certain that many of us who are modern humans have inherited bits and pieces of the legacy of the Neanderthal in our DNA, which can be tested and shown in modern DNA tests. So get ready to learn why the Neanderthal lives on in you. The first question we need to ask is the not so simple one of who the Neanderthals actually were. Neanderthals lived during the Ice Age. They often took shelter from the ice, snow, and otherwise unpleasant weather in Eurasia's plentiful limestone caves. Many of their fossils have been found in caves, leading to the popular idea of them as quote-unquote cavemen. Like other humans, Neanderthals originated in Africa, but migrated to Eurasia long before other humans did. Neanderthals lived across Eurasia, as far north and west as Britain, through part of the Middle East to Uzbekistan. Popular estimates put the peak Neanderthal population at around 70,000, though some scientists put the number drastically lower. Their short, stocky stature was an evolutionary adaptation to cold weather, since it consolidated heat. According to some scientists, the wide nose likely helped humidity and warm cold air. Other differences from other human beings are a flaring funnel-shaped chest, a flaring pelvis, and robust fingers and toes. Furthermore, perhaps due to the icy climate, Neanderthal brains took even longer to fully grow and mature when compared to modern humans. Neanderthals lived in nuclear families. Discoveries of elderly or deformed Neanderthal skeletons suggest that they took care of their sick and those who could not care for themselves. Neanderthals typically lived to be about 30 years old, although some lived longer. It is accepted that Neanderthals buried their dead, though whether or not they left carved bone shards as grave goods is debated. It is not known if they had language, though the large size and complex nature of their brains makes it a likely possibility. The tools Neanderthals used were similar to the ones used by other early humans, including blades and scrapers made from stone flakes. As time went on, they created tools of greater complexity, even utilizing materials like bones and antlers. Whilst all of this is interesting, what really interests us is the nature of human and Neanderthal interaction. Modern Homo sapiens arrived later in Eurasia than did the Neanderthals, but brought with them several traits that allowed them to thrive, compete, and ultimately win out over the Neanderthals. The icy climate the Neanderthals had evolved in brought about specific adaptations, but the climate was changing, and so too was the geography, becoming more and more open. The short and stocky Neanderthals simply could not adapt quickly enough to the changing terrain, and when modern humans arrived, they brought greater creativity, ingenuity, and different body structures that were more adaptable than those of the Neanderthals, who were, through a combination of climatic change and maladaptation, outcompeted by modern anatomical Homo sapiens. Throughout all of this, though, we have been able to glean some interesting information. Recent research published in the October 2017 issue of the American Journal of Human Genetics found that genomes of modern human groups originating outside of Africa contain between 1.8 and 2.6% Neanderthal DNA, and another 2017 study found that modern human DNA entered the Neanderthal gene pool between 130 and 145,000 years ago. This means that, despite being outcompeted and ultimately going extinct, those of us of European and Asian ethnicity likely have some genetic component in us that is a small but living representative of some long-lost Neanderthal ancestor, something we can think about whilst getting lost in the increasingly technical 
galaxy of modernity. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to check out our other lists, and thanks for watching, and thanks for learning.